Scene load data is an important class you will utilize often to manage scenes in your game. Scene load data is used to create information on what scenes to load and how to load them. Although the class looks quite large, we're only going to be focusing on the selected area as the rest is just constructors to make initializing scene load data easier for you. The first field is scene lookup data. This contains information on which scenes are to be loaded. Let's take a look into that class. There are only two fields here, the handle and the name. The handle is used to load a scene by handle, such as to put players into a specific instance of a scene. For example, if you are using scene stacking where you have multiple instances of the same scene loaded at once on the server, you would need to look up the scene by its handle rather than name. Handles are unique for each scene loaded even if it's a scene loaded multiple times. The name is the name of the scene to be loaded. Both the handle and the name can be populated at once and when this is the case, a scene will load by handle. If only the name is specified, then the scene will be loaded by name. Below this are a variety of constructors on how to initialize the scene lookup data. And going down further is get scene. This is here to return the scene which the lookup data points to. There's also the create data options which opens up an easy way to create scene lookup data. You will likely use these methods a lot. You may not use all of the features in scene lookup data, but they are there if you need them. Next is moved network objects. You can set this field through one of the many constructors or after creating the scene load data. As the description suggests, network objects within this array are moved to the first scene specified in scene lookup data. This can be useful for moving players between scenes when loading new scenes. Replace scenes is used to determine how new scenes are loaded and or affect existing scenes. There are a few options to choose from. Selecting all will replace all scenes with the new scenes you are loading. This includes any scenes not managed by the scene manager, such as UI scenes, so be careful when using this option. Next is online only, which will also replace scenes, but only if they are managed by the scene manager. For a scene to be managed by the scene manager, it must be loaded using the scene manager within Fish Networking. The default is none. When set to none, no scenes will be replaced and all specified scene lookup data will be loaded additively. Another really important thing to remember is that even when using an option which would replace a scene or scenes, global scenes will not be replaced except when using scene load data on a global load. There are two types of load, connection and global. I won't be going into details on this in this video, but in short, connection will load for one or more connections while global will load for everyone and the scene will remain persistent until unloaded. Param is next. These are parameters you can pass into the scene load data to help identify unique information about your scene load. Let's look at that class now. There's only two fields, server and client params. These data can be literally anything you want. Many events of the scene manager will include scene load or unload data, and in them you can read the params to your own needs. Notice the server params are not serialized. This field will not be sent to clients during the scene load. However, client params will be serialized, which can be useful for passing information to the client during a scene load. And here we have the options, which can drastically affect how your scene is managed. This is an important part of the scene load data. The first field in load options is automatically unload. While set to true, a scene will be unloaded after there are no more clients within it. For example, if you have a world that you want unloaded from the server when all clients leave, automatically unload should be true. When set to false, you must manually unload the scene as it will not be unloaded after all clients leave. Also, this only applies to connection scenes. As mentioned before, global scenes are persistent until manually unloaded. Next is disallow stacking. Before describing this field, note that on release 2x, this will be changed to allow stacking and the value will be reversed. The naming change is to create consistency amongst the Fish Networking API. When stacking is allowed, a scene may be loaded multiple times or as referred to previously, multiple instances of the same scene. An example would be if you wanted the same dungeon to be loaded on your server multiple times for separate connections in each. When allowing stacking, if you specify the handle in the scene lookup data, then the connections will load into that specific scene's handle. Otherwise, a new instance of the scene will be made. While not allowing stacking or just allow stacking is true, there will be only one instance of the scene which all connections loading that scene will share. Local physics is a Unity property which addresses how the physics on the scene should behave. In short, if you have physics in your scene, be it rigid body, raycast, etc., and you are scene stacking, then you will need to change the local physics mode from none. As you can see, there is a link to the Unity documentation on local physics mode. If you are not scene stacking, local physics mode can be left to none. Addressables is next, and this should be set to true if the scenes being loaded are addressable scenes. That concludes the scene load data class. You'll see me utilize this class in the scene loading video.